Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, today we'll be talking about Nigeria, U.S.-Nigeria relations. We're joined this morning by uh, Sam Oha who is a former national president of Nigeria, America Chamber of Commerce. He's also the founder of Foundation for Economic Development. Thank you for coming this morning, sir. Thank you. Well, uh, finally, the White House has released uh, details of President Trump's conversation with President Barry. But when all this conversation about uh, when the U.S. president kept on talking about America first policy, the principle, how they were going to approach the economics and things as that, did you think that, oh dear, our relations may be in some sort of jeopardy if we bring nothing to the table? Well, the, the, the point is that um, it's, it's, it's clear that um, Donald Trump wants to uh, decide the terms of virtually every relationship he wants to have with every any country. That's why he's pulling out from from uh, groups and associations and uh, trade um, uh, trade terms and partnerships. He wants to deal with each person so that he can use his skills as a very um, experienced business negotiator to get the best terms for uh, the country. And so what I, what I feel is that um, uh, every effort and from what I'm hearing uh, is looking at how he can um, swing the balance of trade much more in favor of the United States of America. And um, while I, I'm excited that uh, the call portends a desire uh, to respect Nigeria, to appreciate Nigeria's strategic uh, positioning, but I, I believe that at the end of the day, it might lead to further um, a swing in trade in favor of America. Mm. But you know, in terms of the kind of policies we put out in this country, do we deliberately sit back and say, look, these are the kind of policies we need to have. We need to have protectionist policies against our companies here, against some of the others, WTO notwithstanding. Do you see that reflected in any of our policies? Well, the point is that we do not have a very strong ideological base because to be able to define certain interests, there has to be a driving ideology. Economic um, thoughts are purely reactionary and we, throw, we just see challenges and then we follow them and look for the best way to deal with them. Uh, I, I, I think that is what is uh, our issue. So there is no consistency. If there were ideological um, position in our trade economic pursuit, we will be more consistent. You see some policy stability, but where we react and respond as we move along, then policies will keep changing. And so there's no absolute focus because if we did, Five years ago, ten years ago, we'll have said this is where we're going with our true relationship with key nations. If we are determined that in ten years' time we'll reduce our oil exports or the component of oil as a percentage of our total exports to X percent and then design strategies to take us there, then we'll be consistent, hopefully. But we haven't been. Uh, if you go and read the uh, the statement of the uh, uh, of 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 Mr. Um, Shegu Shagari several years ago in 1982 uh, as to how he wanted our economy. You see, it's the same thing. We are just speaking, but no plan. We make those speeches, but there's no consistent plan. That that's what I thought things like Vision 2010, Vision 2010 were supposed to achieve long term strategic vision. But of course, you and I know that 2010 never got off ground. 2020 was uh, mostly a private, a public sector uh, matter. It didn't sync very well with the uh, private sector. Do, so, do you think the, the Ministry of um, Solid Minerals, for instance, is well positioned to harness? the mineral resources that we control in this country to uh, make the maximum gains in terms of trade relations with the U.S.? Well, it's the, 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 when you look at what is on the ground, there's nothing that cheers you. We'll be speaking about diversification of our economy. 
but nothing is really on the ground. Now watch what is the budget allocation to solid minerals. That's how you begin to see uh, a serious commitment to um, moving in that direction. The ministry may mean well. We've been speaking the, from the days of OBS Equestling when she came to the Ministry of Solid Minerals. Announced there were 34 minerals in, uh, in the country, well documented. I, 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 I even tried one time to venture into solid minerals in a boy state, and <laughs> it was all joke. <laughs> you know, um, we, we really we are long in the speech, uh, but we are very short in you know, doing the work that will lead us to that because it means sacrifice, it means giving off certain things to do other things. But uh, the problem we have is that we want to satisfy everything at the same time, it, probably for political expediency. So, because if you say, let's not do this, let's do this, maybe those who start complaining of uh, marginalization or <laughs> abandonment or whatever. So, the government is uh, usually faced with uh, deciding its priority. You know, it's a problem. Even when government has decided some priority from the private, from the executive, when he arrives at the legislature, then everybody begins to think about one, one and nine senators, one, 360 constituencies, and we begin to break them apart. And then we get piecemeal that does not allow um, any concentrated effort. And before it, you know, our election cycles are very short. Before you know it, we are talking about 2019, and people have forgotten that we are yet to even see the impact of 2015. Let me, let me look at the exploration through your eyes, because you have tried, as you said, you tried yeah. to uh, venture into solid mineral yeah. uh, acquisition and mining. What challenges do, did you face, and what challenges uh, do others like you who try to to explore along those lines. What kind of challenges do you face? Number one, there hasn't been proper seismic study. Um, we, we, there's no definitive uh, certainty about the quantity of any solid mineral in most places. They may have ideas. We did exploration in several places, spent money, and we didn't find anything of uh, of commercial value. Number two is the oil um, oil problem has polluted the entire environment of uh, exploration because before you arrive, the community are already on you. In fact, some place we wanted to do, they say we have to build bridge first before they will let us go to the place because that's a small river. They say we need to build a bridge. And we're asking where we're going to get the money. We haven't started exploration. They are waiting to collect from you when you haven't made it. So hostility of, uh, or well, let me not call it hostility, unrealistic expectations of uh, host community. Thirdly, is that the investment required is large to get the kind of equipment you need. Because what is going on is essential artisanal uh, work. And to get equipment, across to some of those places will require infrastructure which does not exist because to get to the mining site talking from my own experience we had to cross i've just spoken about a bridge you wouldn't even have to get a big truck to evacuate uh, what you have so infrastructure is not there then investment in equipment uh, is a major issue and i'm not sure any nigerian bank is lending anybody to go into mining because they can't see the prospects, solid mineral mining, unlike what we see in crude oil. So it's a combination of lack of infrastructure, inappropriate geophysical studies to establish uh, quant quantity, and, you know, we've also played around with the policies. So, so we, have, we have all these um, solid mineral uh, base, and we don't have the capacity to uh, make a, make a bring, up, bring up a front when it comes to trading yeah. those minerals with the Yeah, what with is going United on States. that is purely just some guys hanging around digging the soil. You know, there has been, since after the, uh, since after the war, because pre-war, you had a lot of mining, commercial mining going on in, in Plateau, in Jaws, where tin 
and copper and a few of those they were going and there were companies that you know international companies but when those companies left and we moved on to oil we still haven't gotten such people come back who can invest and part of it is also the overall uh, issues with our operating environment and you know our uh, stability and attractiveness of foreign investment that's also an issue because um, mining is 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 risky uh, and 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 you need to create appropriate incentives that can let people make the investment that is required and the policy framework has also to be consistent uh, over a period of time both to enable you source the funding and also to enable you explore and be able to reap the investment Master our work to solid mineral commercial ex is a work in progress some work have been uh, I go back to when i talked about all the equally some work has been done but in a more stop and go uh, uh, perspective uh, this particular government is pushing along with their handicap because the investment required is enormous in a declining recessionary economy government will not have the appropriate resources to put there so what should come there is private sector investment but again the operating environment is not very attractive for private sector investment so it's a it's a it's a, a difficult challenge the prospects are there but we need to do more to be able to realize it, make it proper potential uh, uh, as a good help.